Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Tie and Gig oh, Builds. Shit. We're doing the Tie and Gig Builds thing, aren't we? We are. As you can see here, we have an hourglass that, you guessed it, uses LEDs instead of sand. You flip this over here, and it drops down just like the sand would. We really wanted to make uh, something visually that appealed to us with lights that seemed like sand for an hourglass. Mm -hmm. We got something pretty close and we're pretty pleased with it. It doesn't exactly tell time, but man, it is interesting. And you know what? Why don't we run the tape, Gig? We're gonna run the tape and show you guys how we do it. Bills. At Bills. Bills. It's always number two. <laughs> yeah, at, at most two. For today's build, we're working on an hourglass here. We do have some leftovers. You know we always like to use those leftovers. I'm cutting out six of these. I've already cut one, but I'm cutting out six of these little frames for the hourglass. Um, let's measure up and cut. Dry fit them? Yeah, you know, a little bit. Here. I'll film you. Boom. Boom. And that's how you build an hourglass. So Gig made this frame, which we'll use for the hourglass, which is great, it came out really good. So we're just gonna create the back now that we're gonna add, attach to the back of the LEDs, and we're gonna have the acrylic we're gonna cut for the front, and then we'll start attaching LEDs and start doing the electronics. Originally, we thought it'd be cool if we did like an infinity mirror type hourglass that worked with an hourglass, but then we thought, wow, what if we just put the LEDs in the back of something like this, and then it looked like grains of salt actually, grains of sand actually falling down. So that's the option we went with. So right now we're just gonna make the backer board for this, and then we're gonna insert an acrylic part that'll fit the front, and then we'll start playing with the electronics a bit once I glue on the back. Builds. Okay, so we cut the front of the acrylic, we polished it up, so this will be kind of what it looks like. We're not really sold on the frosted look, we might just remove the, the place entirely, but we're not sure. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll get back to this, but right now we're gonna look at the electronics. Basically we have a strip of WS2812B LEDs, and then we're gonna make evenly spaced horizontal lines on the backer board, making sure not to cross the boundary of where the wood's gonna be. And we're gonna solder the connections, and then we're gonna use this accelerometer I got from Adafruit, which I haven't used yet. I hope it works well. <laughs> we'll find out, we're gonna test it out, but basically we're gonna connect an ESP286, an ESP8266 to the back of this to read from the accelerometer and tell which LEDs to light. Then in code, based on the orientation of this, we're gonna start actually sending LEDs down this like grains of sand. And I've never actually seen anything like this, neither is gigs, so we're really hoping it looks good. I hope I can program this well. I'm confident I can, but I don't know if I can do this in such a short time period. So we'll see what we can do. I would note that we did make this a little wide here. We're planning on having about one LED here, but we're gonna need wires to connect them. So we made the distance a little bigger because we did have to add wires to it. We're hoping that at the end result, we'll look pretty good. We'll have to measure it out and see, but we're really excited for this. So we're gonna glue on these WS2812B LEDs. Then we're gonna connect the ESP8266 to control them and this accelerometer, which I bought, which we'll have to figure out how to do. Um, but that's pretty much it. Mike, what is that called? Uh, it's called a what? Bills. <laughs>
soldered up everything in a snake pattern. These WS2812 LEDs, basically they have to follow the same direction in only one way, so we had to make sure that we connected it in this, in this orientation. So now that they're all connected like this, we're gonna drill a hole here, connect the wires to the back, and then on the back of this, this is where we're gonna put the ES8266 along with the accelerometer I got here, and we're gonna mount everything, and then I can finally start testing things out and coding it. So fast forward a couple days, <laughs> you stripping back there. <laughs> Fast forward a couple days. I uh, I basically soldered all the electric components. So let's go over it. We have a five volt power supply to power the lights. Pretty simple. We have an Arduino Mega. I used. I was planning on using the ESP8266, but I don't remember where I put it. So we're gonna use the Arduino. Either one will work. And then the Arduino is connected to the accelerometer I got from Adafruit, and this just uses. I, I see two communication, I think it's basically SDL and SDA. Um, and so it works you know, fairly well with a lot of microcontrollers. The next thing I'm gonna do is start programming it. I think the easiest way to do this is to start with programming and filling you know, just the top portion, just the bottom portion, what I like, and then start filling in the gaps with the animations. I've come to the conclusion that it's probably not gonna be accurate to tell time, but I think that it'll still kind of have a really cool effect, I'm hoping at least, um, and we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so fast forward a couple more days. I just finished programming this thing. It works pretty well. Um, it doesn't tell time very accurately, but it looks like grains of sand are actually falling. The resolution isn't exactly that high, but it's, it's really a memory issue I've been dealing with with the Arduino. I can only really have four different um, animations here, uh, animating the sand coming down, animating the sand on the bottom, and then when you tilt it left and right, having the sand go where the tilt is. And you can also flip it upside down. We'll get to a few demos in the end, but I just wanna talk about the code really quick. So aside from the memory limitations, it came out really well. Basically the gist is uh, we have about six frames per cycle. Um, in each cycle we have sand dropping from the top and then sand trickling down and then sand accumulating in the bottom. And each cycle uh, we take the count of the LEDs, subtract it from the top, add it to the bottom, and then uh, draw the LEDs relative to the snake pattern. And now, now that the code talk is over, I'll leave the code link in the description. It has more comments and it goes into the code a little bit more. I'll probably even write in instructables with even more details. But now that the code is over, we're just gonna glue this frame on nice and tight and then we're gonna sand it down and finish it, you know, the proper time gig builds method. Builds. tilt this and the sand's gonna go where it's tilted. I don't know what else to tell you guys. No, it's realistically, this is one of the coolest things we built. Uh, definitely one of the most innovative. I haven't really seen light hourglasses like this before. Um, I looked up a lot of video videos. I tried to look up a lot of videos. Uh -huh. We couldn't find anything like this. Yeah. So we said, you know what? Let's try it out. We're really trying to bring creative and new ideas to the Builds channel and something that'll even look cool in our studio and our filming setting. So don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, give us your ideas, let us know what you think is something that we could build that maybe you've never seen before. And we'll see you next week. On Tie and Gig Builds. <laughs>